I think we're going to see the best wings in Prem. No I think him or Johnny May. No, nowhere near. I would, I'd put him way down. Johnny May doesn't really? even play that well in the Prem. Really? I, he's gassed up quite a lot. I noticed, so I wouldn't be surprised if made into an England training camp, especially for the Six Nations coming up. Give him some experience. He's still so young, like Mal said, 20 years old. So, can you really ignore him? Rugby. Hello and welcome back to Much Do About Rugby, your weekly podcast where we chat about everything rugby. In this episode, we talk about the top teams and players to look out for in 2021. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more exclusive rugby content. Welcome back, Maxin and Malachi. Obviously, today we're talking about our 2021 players to watch, so I've asked you to prepare some players. So should we just start by jumping right into it then? Maxin, who is your front row selection for the 2021 um, player to watch? Yeah, my front row selection is uh, England front row, Will Stewart. Um, so Will Stewart with his incredible haircut in 2020. It's a um, mullet, isn't it? Yeah, mullet. Yeah, yeah. He, um, Are he the guy who plays for Exeter or Bath? I can't always uh, He's Bath. He's Bath. Um, but yeah, sort of came bursting onto the international scene. He got seven caps in 2020, mainly coming off the bench. But I think his sort of brute, his brute force coming off the bench is pretty easy to see. He's, he's 133 kilos. 133? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> like, how much, does, how much does Billy V weigh? He's 130. So he's he's heavier than he's Billy Vinopola. Actually heavier than, how tall is, how tall is Will Stewart? Do we know? I don't know. Don't look it up. No, I don't. I actually know um, nothing about this guy. Will Stewart. They play for yeah, I really don't he's, know that much. He's the guy with all. the mullet, but he's yeah. basically just an, he's an absolute beast. He's Eng England's biggest player by a mile. And he's actually, I, I thought he was playing pretty well in internationals, given he has no international experience and amounts of seven caps. Was he at Exeter and then literally the season at Exeter win the double? He left. I don't think so. I think he's joined Bath in 2019. So, for some reason, I just before Exeter got really, really good, yeah, and won the Champions Cup. That's kind of peak, but at the same time, <laughs> Bath, Bath are a little bit on the up. They've obviously got players like Rosie. So, <laughs> yeah, that was my front row player. Awesome, Mal. Who's four. yours? I went. I've gone for Alfie. You got Barbary. four. Wait, you got four? <laughs> no, I just said I've gone for Alfie Bath. <laughs> I thought you said you got four front row players. I was like, man, I didn't realize you were that interested in the front row. But no, yeah, right, really Alfie, Alfie Barbary, really yeah, not. yeah. Front row, just Alfie Barbary. Just uh, how old is he? Twenty, something like that. And yeah, he's twenty. Really, like, yeah, I think has he scored two hat tricks, or has he just scored one? He scored one That's definitely just, last just, season. Just the one, actually. And then, I think. And then yeah, but he's been he's been doing pretty sick, and apparently he's just a bit. A machine on the pitch. I've actually got some. I've got some stats for him actually because I chose. I didn't choose him for my front row player. I chose him for my back row player because that's obviously where he's been playing for Wasps. So I, exactly. I wrote. I wrote this stuff down. Uh, he, so he's got seven tries in his first ten games, including a hat trick. Um, he's definitely an England prospect, but it's one of England's most competitive positions. But the fact that he can he can cover as hooker, I think, is like a massive advantage for him. Um, and I've but just Ed, he'd down play, here. He would play, he he'd play hooker row. for England if he was going to play for England. He wouldn't play back row. But that's like uh, an added benefit. It's like Ben Earl playing centre as well as... Yeah, yeah. But it would be like, oh, he's a hooker. But I don't think, personally, benefit. I don't think there's space for him in the England squad at the moment. I don't think he's he's that good. But well, there's the definitely way, space for him the same hooker. way that Jack Willis couldn't go unnoticed last season because of his turnover stats. Like, Barbary's... Barbary's try scoring stats are absolutely outrageous and probably can't go unnoticed so I wouldn't be surprised if he made it into an England training camp especially for the Six Nations coming up give him some experience he's still so young like Mal said 20 years old so can you really ignore him probably you've still got Underhill Curry uh, all these bad players <laughs> Stupid. in the back <laughs> row and then you've got George and Luke Cowandicki in the front row so you know yeah, can you you're really not ignore be, him? You're yes, not going to be can. replacing George or Cowan Dickey anytime soon. Literally CNA, lion standard hookers. Um, yeah. Good but, outrageous. Though. Anyway, that was my back row. So Who is your front row then? My front row was Roy Sutherland. Why? From Scotland. <laughs> I think he's 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 one of only 
two non-English players um, that I've chosen for, <laughs> for my players to watch. <laughs> I actually thought I thought about it. I was like, actually, Ireland have quite a few young players, but I don't want to choose anyone from Ireland just <laughs> just because I hate Ireland. and Wales as well. Hey. I just hate everyone apart from England. Um, you want to hate them? Ireland. Just prefer England, obviously. <laughs> I don't I don't hate anyone really. Um, but no, Roy Sutherland. Uh, obviously been pegged for a lion shirt, but I haven't actually seen that much of him. So for me, I want to see more of him. For for me personally, I just want to see him play more want to see what he's about apparently he's quite good and according to his highlights reel I quite like it and he seems like a dynamic prop like someone like a Mako Vunapola who who can carry really well offload good at scrummaging I just want to see what the hype's about to be honest so he's yeah, if he I gets into a Lions shirt wrong. I think he's 100% one one to watch and I don't know if he counts as a bolter really because he hasn't played much rugby recently but definitely one to watch out for which club? Which clubs he playing for? Edinburgh, I think. Edinburgh's team actually not that bad. Yeah, Edinburgh are good. They got that. Who's who's that number eight? Bill Matter. Who? It's absolutely. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Bill just Matter. Carries it, just carries it carries with one hand. What? He's the guy that did that outrageous offload a couple of years ago, like round the back, out the back of his hand. <laughs> yeah, he's outrageous. <laughs> but uh, no, Edinburgh are exciting team to watch. Also, they got Hamish Watson, who's also. An absolute nutter. And Jamie Ritchie. And Jamie Ritchie, who's also an absolute nutter. Didn't did was it Jamie Ritchie who recently signed a new yeah, contract? Yeah, whoever. Yeah. I what? don't know. Also, Edinburgh had Duhan van der Mer, but see now Worcester on a like three hundred k deal. Worcester. Going to be one of the <laughs> highest paid players in the Premiership. Why would he? So literally, he's just got Scot- Scotland residency. Can play for Scotland. And now moves moves down to England for the big bucks. He's actually played the system very nicely there. I like that from <laughs> Duhan. I like that. The right, moving so high quality as well. Moving on, second rows, Maxon. Oh, I actually couldn't even think of a second row that there's to watch. I th- I think it's possibly the deadest position in in rugby at the moment for upcoming talent. <laughs> um, I don't think that's true at all. Right, moving on. That was really boring, Maxon. Thanks very much, <laughs> Mal. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone for Ty Byrne from Munster. Yeah, um, good player. Yeah, pre pre tag. I actually haven't seen. I've like heard of him before this season, but when watched him in Munster in those Champions Cups games, he was actually pretty dang. Like, and what he, he's a bit of a you know interesting player. He's not like your standard second row, I guess you could say. Like he did a um like a massive like clearance kick all the way from his twenty two <laughs> against like Quinns or Claremont. I can't remember. It yeah, was Quinns, pretty, yeah. Good. Yeah, did yeah. like a he spiral awesome. kick about yeah. 70 meters downfield and everyone was like oh, oh yeah. a second row a second row kicked <laughs> the ball a second row kicked the ball but... what <laughs> he's pretty good though he's like 29 though i think so he is getting on a bit but maybe he could help ireland get better possibly who knows him and him and james ryan shouldn't that ever be a yeah. phase do you think that ever be a phase in rugby where like all the pet is, is a requirement for all the players to be able to kick like pretty well. Imagine if you had yeah. a t- if you had a team where everyone could kick, like yeah, I think you, it's such a waste of scrummage, scrummaging practice, which is actually more important if you're yeah, if you're so. if your hookers and props are trying to no, but if they kicking. had it, if they just if they if that was just like a prerequisite that they practice when they were really young and they just happen to be happen to be really now, good. At I reckon kicking. they're going to try to blur the lines more between forwards and backs like with in terms of skills because obviously you get some forwards who have like like props just like run, like known to have like the worst hands ever but like then when but then when a prop who has sick hands come along everyone gets gas and like if like everyone every prop was taught to have sick hands then it would just well be, like, that's what they do in new zealand yeah literally that's yeah. why like p- people like famuina just have the most outrageous hands and like <laughs> <laughs> well that's what england are doing now basically so yeah. you've got people like Carl Sinclair, who used to be a 10 when he was younger. Yeah. <laughs> He's obviously going to have pretty sick hands. And Mako as well in front row. Obviously, oh, really, really good hands. Yeah. Who yeah. did you go for, Ed? I went for Mara Tojo, obviously. The obvious oh. choice is one one to watch. No, but this, this is actually uh, quite interesting because with all this Lions chat, I'm going to come on to the Lions later as well, but... Um, He's obviously in with a big shout, becoming the Lions captain. I think he's had 
experience already captaining the England under 20s a few years ago. Um, and with competition from people like Alan Wynne Jones and May Alan Wynne Jones is not going to be captain. Well, who make knows? Who knows? Warren Gallen might <laughs> pull him out of the bag, <laughs> he might pull him out of the retirement home and make him <laughs> captain for one last tour. But no, I think, I think he's definitely one to watch this season like obviously we know Marrow is good and you're always watching out for him when he plays for England um, but at the same time I think this also goes for most of the Saracens squad who should be playing Premiership Rugby this season because they're a Premiership standard side and have a load of England internationals how will the drop down to the Championship and not playing as much um, Premiership standard rugby affect the international side and the international form of England in the Six Nations coming up, I think it's a really interesting thing that you've got Owen Farrell, Elliot Daly, the Vuna Polos, all these great, great England players, Jamie George, um, playing playing for Saracens in the Championship. And how uh, is that going to affect England's actual international form if they're not playing week in, week out and not playing that high-intensity gonna, Premiership rugby? I think it's going to improve it, to be honest. How? Because you you have players who are gonna they're gonna be so rested in comparison. That's like a massive factor. Like I was watching a like a podcast before when Ireland were doing really really well, and they essentially analysed it with like the fixture list of Champions Cup. I think then it was Heineken Cup, and essentially you could like attribute it like almost like down to the T on the number of minutes that their starting fifteen have played, and like the relationship between that is so much. And given the England team so much of it comes from like Saris, like the number of minutes in their legs will be so much less, which obviously you can look at it both ways, but I think I'd look at it more in a way that they'll be way more rested and like way more like keen to actually play high level rugby because they haven't been playing like that top class rugby. Also like you've got to look, obviously we had the game the other day, like Saris versus Ealing where Ealing beat Saris. I think there is like a bit of um, people are massive snobs snobs towards championship rugby and really I don't think it's that bad like I think Mal you pointed out on our chat that like in November Ealing beat Newcastle and Newcastle are like top four in the Prem now so it's kind of like <laughs> the gap our, obviously isn't that yeah is the championship that bad is what we've got to think about but the, the point is I think it, it must be some sort of step up if you're a London Irish or a Newcastle or a Worcester that have been going up and down for the last however long se- seasons, you know, seasons and seasons, maybe even a decade. Um, there must be some sort of step up between those teams and the teams in the championship to, to yeah, make, perform like that over the course of a season. Um, and of then, course. you know, basically guarantee yourself promotion. But you've still got to play in, I'm pretty sure the championship goes to a semi final final at the end, does it not? Yeah, it does. So you still got to perform in that sense under that extra bit of pre- pressure in order. Yeah. You know, if you lose one game, then you, also, you're not going to get promoted. But. I don't. I don't envisage like a lot of the England players to actually play a great deal. I think it'll be a lot like how like one or two play, like how Billy played y- yesterday, um, and just like try and help and mentor the young people into actually winning the games. But I don't envisage them actually playing them loads. So I think yeah. also Saris will be like Saris players will probably be like really focused on England as like a priority. Um, now I think we'll see England like coming right out of the blocks. So like, there's no risk of injury to any of those players as well. So you've got to think as well. Six Nations goes ahead. They're going to be getting game time anyway. So yeah, not like yeah. that deep. I think they all said that like they're really they're quite happy to have like a break for Time their bodies off. to fully reset. They can all like go to the gym more and actually like bulk because like, they won't have to worry about yeah, he, Billy Vunapola, does he really need to bulk? <laughs> <laughs> 130 kgs already. Come on. All right. All right. Back rowers. This I've already told you mine. Mine was Alpha Barberi, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um Maliki, who's yours? Going for another Irish lad, Caleb Doris. Back from a great season. No, Ma- Maxin, who's yours? <laughs> uh, I've gone for Cameron Wokey, the um, the French back rower. Um, he plays for uh, Bordeaux. I've never heard of this guy. Cameron Wokey, he's like 
basically an absolute beast in the um, back row of France. Well, he's flanker um, and he plays for Bordeaux at the moment. Bordeaux are playing seriously good. They're two out of two in the Champions Cup this year um, and doing really well in the mm. Prem. I think they're, if not top, second. Um, and he's basically had, or well, he's had four appearances for France at the moment. And he played in that game where France played against England and was really, really impressive. I think he actually came off the bench in that game, but he's also been coming off the bench when they had their full strength side. Um, how old I is think, this guy? How old is he? Uh, good question. He's 22. Oh, so he's quite, still quite young, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's more of a young player to watch, I'd say. But I think he's going to... Um, I think we'll be seeing him play a lot more for France this year. Um, and yeah, definitely one to watch. A bit of a live wire, really mm. physical and definitely an athlete. Um, so yeah, one to watch for France, I'd say. Cool. Well, Mal, who, who are you actually oh. going to say? Caitlin <laughs> Torres. <laughs> that's my actual answer. That's my actual answer. Yeah, okay. Just, just explain very, try and keep it brief why. Pretty much all I'm saying is he had a good season last season. He's one of Ireland's best players and he's only 22. He's one of the best young back row in the world. And uh, obviously in a Leinster team, he he is one of the best young back rows in the world. Why, why are you making those faces? He literally is. But I, I can only see him getting better pretty much. So, and I think, I, I actually genuinely think he's going to make the Lions tour. I actually, I, I hands down think he will. Yeah, okay, Maybe cool. Start keep dreaming, keep dreaming. Um, <laughs> I was going to make another <laughs> another claim because obviously we've already had Barberi for the whatever position it was, Hooker. Um, the French 8, what's his name? I've forgotten his name momentarily. But he plays Aldrich. for France and La Rochelle. What? Aldrich. Who? Wait, who is yeah, that? Gregory Aldrich, that's who? it. Yeah, that's him. He's he's just yeah. insane. Like, if if you ever watch him play, he's he's just sick. Massive, massive player for France. Um, yeah, to be fair, I think and, all the French players are gonna have big years. To be fair, because they're just on such an up. Hopefully, and this actually brings me yeah, nicely on to uh, my half back choice, Antoine Dupont. Like, how can you keep your eyes off him? Just watch him play rugby every game that he plays because. He's all. He's already become recognised as one of the best players in his, in his position. He just slays every game, scores a ton of tries, sets up a ton of tries, and I'm just so excited to see more of him. As long as he doesn't play well against England, yeah. Matthew, I did completely who have you gone forget for? about him. To be fair, but <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I've gone with a French ten, but not Roman Intermag. I've gone for Mathieu Jalibert. Um, I think he's going to have like a really good year based on the performance again that he had against England in arguably French France's second string side. Um, but yeah, he's still only 22. Uh, I think we, we all spoke about it when we saw him play against England um, for France in their second, second string time, second string side, how impressive he was, like making line breaks, super creative. Um, I like prefer really... him to Unsmack. I don't know if I prefer him, but I think like it. I think he's They're quite different one players, aren't they? Yeah, very different. I think Intermac's more a bit more like of a game like manager, but mm. Jalibert is like super creative, like really. Okay, okay. Well. Here's here's my comparison. I would compare Intermac to Dan Carter, and then if you brought Jalibert on the bet off the bench at ten, it would be like bringing off. Roden Barrett off the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that. So two equally good players, but they're just different in their styles. And, you know, the fact that Intermac plays with Dupont so that you have that starting link and then you bring Shadi Bear off the, off the bench at the end just to best. tear it up. So dang. Actually outrageous. So good. So good. Could, have a, could gas about France all day despite actually hating the French. I love the French. Yeah. But yeah, he's my one to watch. Shadi Bear. Just on, Al. I've gone Who's for yours? Finn Russell. Thought he's <laughs> why you every choice every choice I make, I just I stop. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> but I think I know. I actually think he'll be good this year because obviously leading up to the Lions tour, it's like the fight. It's like the battle between him and Farrell for that starting ten position. And he had a great season last season with Racing. 
going to try and push on, maybe win the Champions Cup this year again. They actually look pretty good. And I think just because of that factor of the, the Lions tour, I think he's going to be really trying to push for that. So I think he's going to have a big year. Yeah, probably. He probably is, to be fair. He has been slaying for... Uh... I just want to see him play for Scotland again, to be honest, because Scotland are low-key kind of boring without him, and I think they definitely need him. Mm. Yeah, because um, I, f- I feel like Scotland Scotland were on like a massive arp, and I feel like they've kind of just like... Plateaued. Just plateaued and moving laterally and not... Like, I was expecting them to like make loads of progress, but I think they have been hindered slightly by not having Finn Russell, because he is kind of their talisman, their best player by, by quite a while. They, they've got talent, and... Yeah, they they definitely got talent. Actually, one of their centers I might I might mention in a second, but he's not actually my choice. But we do have center choices for ones to, for ones to watch in twenty twenty one. Obviously, so Maliki, why don't you tell us your center to watch first? Uh, I've gone for Ollie Lawrence with I I I, I just I struggle on the centers a bit to be honest because I just like there aren't that many like up and coming centers or anything. Obviously, Ollie Lawrence he's. Played for England a bit. He's like 21, pretty, pretty young. He's like got a few caps. Like some people even saying like that he, he could be started for the Lions, like as a replacement for Tuolangi if he's still injured by then, which is completely ridiculous, I think, because they're like, they need a powerhouse like Tuolangi and he's the replacement that we need or something, which is just kind of dumb. But I don't know. And then he's, I don't know. He could be all right, but he's not, he's not even really been like that much of a standout in the Premiership. So so far, like, yeah, not, like, but he is solid. Like he's he is good, quite but good. It's like I don't know. But other than that, I thought like obviously Jordan Pataya. Don't really watch Australian rugby, but he's like been like put as one of the best young players in the world. And ho- and like Australia seems to be on like a bit of a resurgence or something. Like they completely like like mix up their, like whole team. Like they so many new players, so many young players. Uh, like Pataya coming through, and they've got like that. That lock and that they've got a couple of back rowers as well coming through whose names I don't actually know. They've got know. a few guys coming over from the NRL as well, which um it's kind of interesting. Um, really. So hopefully, yeah, he I think he'll he'll be pretty good. But yeah, Ollie Lawrence and Jordan Pataya for me. Nice one, Max Max and Lambert. Go with yours. Um, I also went for Ollie Lawrence because I mean he when he was playing for England, I thought he was really really solid. Obviously, he's still a young player, um, and. Yeah, but I think I think it's unfair on him to just brand him as like a powerhouse or like two and angry replacement. To be honest, yeah, because I think he is. I think he is more than that because like he's not. He's just not the he, same player as two. Yeah, yeah, he's not like as powerful as two Alangi, but I think he's more like he's he's a bit more like deft, like in what Agile. Jonathan Joseph style. Yeah, I think he's more like that than just a powerhouse like two Alangi. Like Ollie Lawrence is really, he's really short as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, like he's not he's like an absolute fun. beast. Less than six, um, I think people just think it's like trendy to say, oh yeah, to a Lange replacement. Mm-hmm. But I think he's different. I also think he's like arguably stronger, like like more stable defensively than Tua Lange has been at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, obviously I don't think he'll put in like the massive killer hits that Tua Lange, Tua Lange does as well. Um, yeah. Fair play, fair we'll play. No, you, let's be honest for the Lions and for England. But but definitely no. Lawrence is definitely one to watch. I guess to yeah. see if he does fill those boots of Tuilangi or com- completely takes on like a different role, or Eddie like plays him in a slightly different way. It's more of like a you know running twelve or thirteen that actually just distributes or whatever. But talking of distributors, I've actually gone for someone. A little bit different that maybe you guys wouldn't have wouldn't have thought of. Uh, I've gone for Cameron Redpath of Bath. Mm. Uh, that he I plays know. twelve or thirteen or ten or basically anywhere in the back line, which is insane. Uh, he he literally only just turned twenty one in December, so that makes him a year younger than me, which is <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Went to Sedbury School. Um, he's scoring some really nice tries. I don't know if you saw his saw his try most recently against. I think it was Wasps, but he literally. Gassed the fullback on the outside, made a really nice break through the middle after a nice little step. I think that's the kind of, you know, kind of just something that Eddie Jones might might like. Also, he's like a playmaking 12, a bit like a, a Slade or a, if, if you're going to play Farrell at, at 12, like a bit more playmaking style than someone who's going to bust in and uh, make those big hits like a Tuolangi or a Lawrence. 
Mm. Um, and he and he stood out for England under twenties as well. So I think there's there's some there's something about this guy. Oddie, obviously Eddie Jones took him to South Africa when he was about sixteen or something, uh, mm. just to make sure that he was going to play for England in the future. So Eddie Jones obviously has his eye on him, and I think he's definitely someone who might who we might see progressing through the England ranks in the coming years. Mm. If not this year, then definitely next year. But definitely keep your eye on him. Yeah, um, because far game will, time isn't he at far. Yeah, exactly. Bath are also on really, really good form at the moment. Um, are they? I don't think they are. Well, they they scored forty four <laughs> points against Wasps, so they're like that, that's not bad form. <laughs> but but their players are playing well. Like you, you look at the likes of Ben Spencer, Red Path, like Rory McConaughey. I Rory think they're definitely gross. I think they're like chronically underperforming for their squad. I don't know. Well, outrageous. we'll see. This season's a bit, a bit different at the moment, obviously. But I think. Uh, yeah. What I, I worry we'll... about with Red Path, though, is, is he, is he a bit of a Billy Twelve Trees? Like, is, is he? <laughs> is he? Average. I think he might be a bit of a Billy Twelve Trees. <laughs> Like, because I've seen him make no, nine... no one ever gassed up Billy Twelve Trees. <laughs> yeah, well, Ed, maybe we'll see this in a few years' time. We'll be like, he was a Billy Twelve Trees, but <laughs> I just, I just think he like, I see him make a line break, and he's just kind of red path. This is, I just, he just looks like a bit of a tractor. Like when he gets through the line, he can't really like. I'm just like, go! He did, he did, he did like, gas, go he did gas the wasps fullback, and or did he yeah. gas Jacob Umaga and yeah, scored, Jacob scored a game. Exactly. Yeah, but Jacob Umaga is meant to be like really, really good. So I don't know. Everyone's gassing him, and he's in the England squad. So I don't know. I think I still prefer Mark Smith over him, to be honest. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Nah, I but... prefer Jacob Umanga. Oh, yeah, also look out for Marcus Smith for Quinns, or look out for the, just the whole Quinn squad in general. No, shut up. <laughs> 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 Moving swiftly on, back three. My back three player is Paolo Udogwu. Most recently scored two tries in a man of, man of the match performance in an extraordinary 44-52 victory against Bath. Uh, he's in a position on the wing, which England in England is extremely competitive at the moment. But um, what's really interesting about about Adogu is that he's actually of Nigerian and Italian descent as well. So depending on who he chooses to play for, we could see him playing some international rugby very soon. Uh, I honestly don't think he's quite good enough to make it into an England team at the moment. But at the same time, definitely could make it into an Italian side. So if you look at it that way, definitely someone who's going to be stepping up onto the international stage soon and hopefully making inroads in the Italian squad. So is he is he allowed to play? What's the rules? Because he's played for England under twenties, I think. Can he then Billy, play? Billy for... Billy Burns literally played in the same team as Maratoja England under twenties, won the oh, World okay. Cup, and now plays for Ireland. So it is can, stupid. So you the, can literally change. The rules are stupid. How can you even do that? Wasn't it Ross Moriarty who played for England under uh, age groups as well? Yeah. Like yeah. there's so much mixing and matching after age groups and in age groups. It's silly. That's a bit stupid. I I personally don't think he'll ever play for England. Because it's a bit like, um, I think, I just don't think, I couldn't see him, like, fitting into, uh, like, Eddie Jones's plans, if you like. Like, just for the same reason, like, Christian Wade didn't, like, both super exciting players to watch. And, like, they score, like, sick tries, like, really good attacking. But, like, I don't know, Eddie Jones is just really weird about it, isn't he? If someone, even if someone's scoring... I'd much a- rather have Johnny May and Anthony Watson on the way. Yeah, and, or Jack Noel. <laughs> It's like outrageous. Yeah. Or Roy That's McConaughey. Like, yeah. Or Roy McConaughey. Just, just, <laughs> just, or Joe Cock and a singer. Mackie, was he yours as well? Was he your back three player as well? Um, he was, but I also had uh, Louis Rees Samet as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, really and the reason him. why, I think, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a feeling with Louis Rees Samet that he's kind of like, there's been quite a lot of gas about him, but I don't, th- I think he's obviously been playing incredibly well in the Prem. But I don't think he's quite reached that like top like that he that he can get to, um, where he's like considered like one of the best wingers in the world, hands down. Because obviously right now he's considered pretty much the best winger in the Prem. He's still he's May. still only about twelve years old, isn't he? Yeah, he's still so young. But I think we're going to see the best wing in the Prem. No I think any... him or Johnny May. No, nowhere near. 
I would, I'd put him way down. Johnny May doesn't really? even play that well in the Prem. Really? Uh, he's gassed up quite a lot. Like, every time he plays for Gloucester, if you listen to commentators, or like BT Sport before the match, they'll be like, player to watch every time Louis Rees Summit. He's got so much pace on the wing, he will finish any opportunity. Austin Healy, literally. Oh, my God. <laughs> Austin Healy needs to sit down. He's actually... <laughs> He's actually just not funny. He's but not But that's funny. the point. He's just, he's, he's ridiculously quick. But like... Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. Like, which kind of relates to my point. My guy is Johan Lloyd. <laughs> my <It's> guy. <laughs> my, my man is <laughs> Johan Lloyd. But he, yeah, Bristol, he can play wing, fullback and 10. But he's like, he is a back three player. But like, his actual skills are just so much more than Louis Samets. Like, Johan Lloyd. Lloyd. He's he Welsh, right? Yeah, yeah, he's Welsh. He he plays. He's nineteen as well, and he's um he can he's kicking good. Like out hand kicking, his ha- hands are way better. His steps better. Yeah, his he's, step. He's, he's, he's not he's, as he's not as quick as Zam, but I just think he's just a better player to be honest. Did he agile, did he get a cap? Did he get yeah, a cap yeah, against yeah. Italy? Yeah, he got cap for Wales um recently. I remember watching like a try. I think he a try he set up. And uh, there was so much pressure on him. He literally stepped his way out and then gave it to someone. Did Piers O'Connor score it? Yeah, Piers O'Connor. Seems, yeah. He seems to score every try Bristol yeah, yeah, ever yeah. score. Yeah. It's crazy. Went to Eastbourne College as well, quite local to us for those. Yeah. And Cumnor House. And Cumnor yeah. House. So he went to school, yeah, Miles, Miles Prep School as well. So He's Miles' uh, best Piers, mate, apparently. Piers, yeah. I know you're listening, mate. You're welcome <laughs> on the podcast <laughs> anytime. <laughs> anytime. Um <laughs> So I also that's... want to give a shout out to uh, Simon Zebo. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's, he's quite dank. I actually think he should be <laughs> for Ireland. He should be starting for Ireland if that was allowed. <laughs> no, nah, he Please is silence for yeah. a second there. <laughs> <laughs> he is shout out to hey, Simon hey, Zebo. I thought you were just shouting him out like, yeah. <laughs> Come on the pod. No, I mean, <laughs> shout out for him as a back three player to watch out for. Like, so, so what? Who who are we looking out for this season? It's a dog woo, Reese Samet, not Zebo. Not Zebo. <laughs> and and Johan Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And to wrap this whole thing up, we are also going to talk about a team that we want to look out for this season, a specific team. So, we've obviously had a, a a player in each position almost uh to look out for but we've obviously got some exciting teams maybe people who we think might do quite well people who we think might do a bit worse um but let's start off with maxin your team to watch for 2021 Mm -hmm. my team to watch is a premiership team um and it is the sale sharks um, and the reason I picked the sales sharks is well, mouth Ma- space when he said sales sharks, he's like playing with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two reasons why. First reason is unfortunately for me as a Saris fan, they've recently acquired Alex Sanderson as their head coach. Um, and I think he will give them sort of another level of like stability. That I don't think they've had previously when they've had Steve Diamond. Um, because I don't know, I just don't feel like they've been secure, like especially defensively. And Alex Anderson will probably instill that um, defensive pressure that Saris have been so famous for over the last sort of five, five or six seasons. I mean, he's been in Saris for like seventeen seasons, um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the next reason is obviously because of their players. Obviously, they, they I think they've got a lot of players injured at the moment. Tuolangi, Diaga, both injured. Um, but at full strength, they are absolutely incredible. Arguably, they have the best squad in the Premiership. Um, a lot of South Africans, Fafta Klerk, Van Rensburg, Luke, uh, Luke Diaga, Dupree brothers. Um, and then they have the Curry brothers on top of that, Tuilangi. Um, Josh Beaumont coming back from injury. Josh Beaumont, yeah. Um, an r- incredible squad. And I think under Alex Sanderson, definitely one to watch in 2021. And- Quinn's grown player, Marlon Yard. What a player. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so um, annoying. No, definitely, definitely want to watch. The thing I find interesting about Sale is that they have all these great players and yet they never seem to quite perform as well as... Like when Tuolangi came, everyone was like, oh my gosh, Sale are the new, the new kids on the block and they just haven't quite... <laughs> You know, yeah. managed to edge their way in there quite as much as people thought. They they've been mm-hmm. losing like 
a couple of matches where you think actually no you should be winning them um but me yeah i completely agree alex anderson should bring that defensive stability at least to begin with um did you say it was almost like having Sean Ed Sean Edwards? Yeah, it? I was saying, yeah. It's it's like, I mean, the effect we saw Sean Edwards move into France on the France team. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a similar effect in Alex Anderson moving to sale. Even I think it could even be more astounding at sale because he's got that he's the director of rugby position. More rather than just a, could be. Um but yeah, even so, just like a winning a winning mindset, like Alex Anderson's been at Saris for so long, that's what he's going to be used to. And I think what he'll probably instill a, a sale, um, if not in 2021, in, in the next three or four years. Fair play. Maliki, who is your team to watch in 2021? I can pick one team, but so I just like, in general, <laughs> I just went for pretty much any good French team. So like Toulouse... Clermont, Racing, Bordeaux, <laughs> Lyon. Well, do you want to pick one? Uh, probably either Racing or Toulouse, I'd say, what to watch out for, just because obviously they're they're kind of like the the big dogs in the um in the French league. The they big got dog. they got they, they got like those um the key players, the guys are like uh Intermac and and Dupont <laughs> for Toulouse. You put a lot of no. thought into this answer. Right? No, you did. <laughs> I couldn't decide. I literally couldn't decide. That's the thing. I, did, I had to put so. Many... But yeah, I so reckon just, obviously with the, went with the rise France of France in general. Rugby, yeah, All France the in general, they're going to be good, and that's going to be reflecting their club rugby. So I think, and obviously they they, they were pretty sick last season in Champions Cup. So and they look to be pretty good this season as well. Like yeah, fair. Clermont are pretty dank, even though they did lose to Munster. But I think that they got a lot, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, so with with Mal- Maliki's thinking a uh, French Champions Cup victory, then is that what you're yeah, thinking? I think so. I actually do think so, especially with, with the thing that Maki was saying the other day about um, uh, you were saying how like extra like how they've been like stupidly arrogant. Like we've won it, we've already won everything. Like and then then they like they lost to like, who did they lose? They lost to someone in the Champions Cup already. I swear. Uh, I don't know. Sure. I think oh. I'm pretty sure extra lost to someone like in, like the second round. So possibly, who knows? Right. Probably in a way game, but um yeah, they've been super arrogant though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I think Rob Bax <laughs> well, probably. Oh, what was what was it that Rob Bax said? He's basically just like we can't get out for the we can't really get out for the prem because we won the double last season. In, in not in those exact words, but essentially what he said in a post match interview, which just like get a grip of yourself. Uh, yeah, you don't. Uh, you didn't see Saris doing that, did you? When they won the double twice, they just won it again. They just won it again, <laughs> and then got relegated. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stop crying about it and actually no. get a team up for it. But I have to actually stop you guys right there because <laughs> because although you know Sale might be maybe one to watch, and uh, you know the French team, some people care. But I'll give you the the one team. That is 100% the only team to watch this year. And that is the famous Lions. Lions, Lions, <laughs> Lions. The pinnacle of rugby. I sincerely hope that the tour goes ahead and that we get the tour that everyone so desperately wants and deserves. I think when watching, obviously I haven't been to a Lions game, but when watching it through the telly, I don't think there's any better atmosphere in, in the <laughs> rugby than just... I just want to see the sea of red chanting lions, lions. <laughs> against South Africa in South Africa. I'm staying well up to date on any new information that comes out about the team selection, which we could talk for for hours and we have done in previous episodes. Um, I'm staying up to date also on any sort of organizational things that are happening with it and, and whether this tour might go ahead or not. Um, there's been lots of speculation about because of obviously the COVID the covid thing um whether it's going to go go ahead and what kind of arrangements we could make to to keep the tour on but not actually have the tour itself so there's been hints at, at like not going to south africa they've obviously got the new strain out there and actually just having the tour over here and almost south africa tour the uk or tour you know what would you uh, make of that yeah this is what i wanted to actually talk about because i think it's really interesting i think the whole point of the Lions is that they, they tour. They are the the ones who tour. Hmm. And I think that's what makes it more difficult because I think if, if you're at home, there's a massive advantage 
Um, especially yeah, as a Lions fan, like there would be no Saffers in the crowd. Let's face it, there be, might be like three. Yeah, what happens to all the people who've like got tickets out in South Africa? Because obviously they're not gonna be able to. I don't know. Do you reckon they'll just offer t- offer tickets to the people in the UK? Because obviously, if there'll be people who are like, oh yeah, living in wherever in South Africa, but then if suddenly it gets moved to the UK, some of them might be actually be like, no, I can't be bothered. So I guess they'll UK. probably get their money back. But yeah. I think I don't know. I think it would just be a massive letdown if you can you play a Lions tour without any crowds. No, I don't think you can. No. I, th- I think I think the whole point of the Lions that you need the atmosphere it just makes it that much more special and that much better you know i i can remember watching you know that that amazing draw in the last match against new zealand like the sea of everyone was just, just like almost the crowd was stunned in silence but the atmosphere was still insane like the final few minutes everyone chanting that chant just gets me every time we could actually gas about the lines for hours on Very end much i gas. love them so much because there's also people speaking about the lines possibly Doing the tour against France um, instead of South Africa. What do you guys think about that? That'd mm. be dang. I think that'd be in- that'd be stupidly interesting. I that'd think we'd so absolutely sick. walk over France. Would we? <laughs> so <laughs> much. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so interesting because that I think that'd be. I don't sick. think I France think are probably... good enough. I don't think France are good enough. I don't think France would really be. I don't. I haven't seen enough yet to say that they beat the All Blacks or South Africa and the Lions would yeah. be, would, be could be have beaten would be South Africa or South New Africa Zealand. are the reigning world Cup, world champions so that does make sense to have them as the the Lions tour it's yeah. meant to be it's the thing about the Lions is it's meant to be like the best of the northern hemisphere or at least the UK versus the best of the southern hemisphere and the best three teams in the world generally are or have been South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia. Now, they have... This is obviously proven by the fact that they've won the most Cups and England are the only Northern Hemisphere side to ever win a World Cup. Mm. So it's the fact that you've got these three giants, Southern Hemisphere giants of, of world rugby. And it's that's why the Japan game is just a warm-up game and, and the Lions will play as weak a squad as possible, as weak a team as possible, basically, if it goes ahead. Mm. But it, it's... If if you play against a France, like France are a good team, there's no doubt, but it would just be not as not as special, mm. not as not as big a rivalry because France just aren't as good as those Southern Hemisphere teams. Yeah, I agree. And if you look at it, you've also got to look at it from the perspective of the South Africans as well, because they wait twelve they wait twelve years to play it to have a Lions tour in South Africa, like they they're only going to have like like so many in each South African's lifetime. And I think they look, they look forward to it as much as like Lions, like supporters Fans. do as well. Yeah. I think it would be so unfair to just take that away from them. You know, it's, it's this thing, the, this, the tour only happens once every four years. It's like, it's, it's as important as a world cup. It's as important as, you know, anything in like the Olympics or is the, the Olympics of rugby it only happens if once every four years. It's such a big thing. You know, even if, even if you're Argentinian, even if you're Japanese, you know, you watch the lions, don't you? It's the lions. Come on. I'm so gassed for the lions. The, conce- the, 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 the concept of it, if you think about it, it's actually it's mad. So cool. Yeah. It's mental. It's it's so not, cool. And there's no other sports where they have like a combined team like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's a combined team of players that are usually the biggest rivals. So literally, mm-hmm. in this Six Nations, you will have England playing Wales, the fiercest of rivalries, and those some of those players, at least, will then have to play in the same team against each other and have to build that bond and build that tour relationship and play in what is the biggest match in rugby, like, bigger than a World Cup, I think. Selection, the selection is just mad as well, because it's like, how, it's like, Picking like the best from the very best, it's like yeah, so the hot. best of the it's the best of the best versus the best of the best, isn't it? Yeah, exactly so gas, yeah, it's just <laughs> outrageous. So so look, I think the fact that we've already spoken, well, I've already said we could talk about this for hours, but I think the fact that we've already spoken about about it for the last however long five five ten minutes proves to me that the Lions are one hundred percent the top team to watch this this year. And there we have it. 
our top teams and players to look out for in 2021. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more exclusive rugby content. Speaking of more content, next week we delve into the secrets of Chinese rugby in our continuation of our Rugby Around the World series. See you then. Rugby.